Brexit. Say goodbye, Northern Ireland. So the Irish backstop happens to be one of the reasons why Theresa May's deal was rejected in Parliament. But the deal which I have worked to agree with the European Union was rejected by MPs and by a large margin. I believe it is my duty to deliver on the British people's instruction to leave the European Union, and I intend to do so. The Irish backstop seems to be one of the things which, if changed, could lead Parliament into accepting a Brexit deal. But what is it? Why is it a problem? And why is it so hard to find an alternative solution? And more importantly, are there any other possible solutions? Between 1968 and 1998, the row between Protestant Northern Irish Unionists who wanted Northern Ireland to stay as part of the United Kingdom and Catholic Nationalists who wanted Northern Ireland to join with the Republic of Ireland created a conflict known as the Troubles. So the UK government imposed direct rule over Northern Ireland to restore order. But the IRA then started further violence to try to force Britain's withdrawal. After the deaths of over 3.5 thousand people in 1996, and in an effort to bring an end to the violence, cross-party talks began. Eventually, by Good Friday of 1998, they came up with the Good Friday Agreement. In these past few days, the irresistible force, the political will, has met the immovable object, the legacy of the past, and it has actually moved it. The idea that if one side wins something in Northern Ireland, the other loses, is gone. The essence of what we have agreed is a choice. We are all winners or all losers. It is mutually assured benefit or mutually assured destruction here. Which created a devolved government in Northern Ireland, as well as cross-border cooperation and the decommissioning of weapons. It was ratified by 71% of the population in a referendum. It did not make law for there to be no hard border on the island of Ireland, but it did put in law for Northern Ireland to adhere to the European Convention on Human Rights. It gave the Northern Irish the right to freely choose one's place of residence and promised the removal of security stations. In other words, nothing that seems like a security check or any resistance to crossing the border. So following the EU referendum in 2016, in which the British people voted to leave the European Union by 52%, it was interpreted that the UK should therefore leave the institutions that come with being part of the European Union, namely the customs union and single market. We seek a new and equal partnership between an independent, self-governing global Britain and our friends and allies in the EU. Not partial membership of the European Union, associate membership of the European Union, or anything that leaves us half in, half out. So the customs union means being able to get goods into a country without as many customs checks, therefore being able to trade easier, and the single market means having access to freely cross a border, Therefore, fees are free access to workers abroad, and therefore it makes it easier to supply a business with workers. But they create two problems for Brexit. A customs union means making trade deals with nations as a group of nations rather than as an independent country. Therefore, not being able to get trade deals as beneficial to your individual country. A customs union also means following a set of customs rules made up by that group and therefore having other countries decide what food standards must be adhered to, what environmental standards must be followed, and what pharmaceuticals you can and cannot import. The single market means that anyone from Europe can enter your country, meaning that if you have a stronger economy like the UK, then businesses can profit from less economically developed nations in Eastern Europe, for example by paying them less than a UK worker and still keeping the EU worker happy because by the time they go home and exchange their pounds into Polish Lottie, for example, they can multiply their wage five times. 
This leads to British workers being undercut, out of a job and unemployed, while EU workers have the opportunity to flood a country and put pressure on public services such as housing and schooling. So they're just some of the reasons why Britain wants to leave the customs union and single market. But leaving those institutions creates problems in itself. Namely, it will make it harder to get goods into the country and get migrants we need into the country. It also means anything crossing into the EU from the UK will have to be checked against a different set of rules and therefore that will cause delays and security checks. Or in other words, a hard border. Now there are solutions to this in the withdrawal agreement. But first, I want to discuss what is required under a no-deal scenario. There is no rule under World Trade Organization rules requiring its members to secure their borders. But under the World Trade Organization discrimination rules, there's an issue. Suppose the UK and the EU trade on WTO terms after Brexit. Suppose American apples arriving in the UK at an English port have to go through controls but Irish apples crossing the Irish border into Northern Ireland, also the UK, do not, then the US can complain that its apples were discriminated against. They weren't given equal treatment with the Irish apples when they entered the UK. But the UK could cite national security as an issue, which both Britain and the EU would have to agree to. It does present a problem for trading with the US though, if we cited national security as a reason for no border checks, then it means both the UK and the EU would be agreeing that when the US imposed tariffs on aluminium and steel, they abused the rule. We will respectfully put tariffs on the cars. The United States will take in billions and billions of dollars into its coffers. Isn't that nice? Because you don't hear that. Because the US left Canada exempt from the tariffs, but didn't have a Good Friday agreement or anything similar to justify the exemption. We all know what they want to do with their southern border with Mexico due to security. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. So it would be difficult for them to then justify their Canada border. It's just as likely the EU would not agree to make it easier to import EU goods into Northern Ireland than the rest of the UK without taking part in one of its institutions because it wouldn't be fair to other borders of conflict, such as any of the countries which border Russia. We all know the borders disputes that happened in Ukraine. Now, Ukraine isn't an EU country, but let's say a similar war happened in Latvia, for example. The international community would be looking towards a Good Friday-style agreement to bring peace in the region. That would give a world nuclear power unfair access to the single market and customs union without paying in. But let's say a future Russia flooded Latvia with its own people, managed to get an independence referendum like the Good Friday Agreement, and then voted to stay part of Russia and leave the EU. Then Russia could quite easily claim back the Baltic nations. The same could happen if a flood of Middle Eastern migrants and ISIS came into Turkey and international pressure was on the EU to relieve some of that migration pressure. But the point is, it's in the EU's interest to protect its own border, and therefore they aren't likely to allow international treaties that give way to open borders in the event of national security, because of international security. Plus there's also the fact that a no-deal scenario presents many other economic and political problems and is unlikely to be agreed by the UK Parliament. Which brings us on to the deal. Remember I mentioned earlier that being outside a customs union would make it harder to import goods because customs rules would be different. Well, within the withdrawal agreement is the common rule book, which essentially copy and paste the rules from EU law into UK law, essentially keeping the same rule book and therefore being responsible under the European Court of Justice if we break one of those rules. But even that isn't good enough for creating a free border in Northern Ireland. The exact details of the UK's trade relationship with the EU is due to be negotiated once the withdrawal agreement can be agreed. But if the withdrawal agreement is agreed and the future trade relationship cannot be agreed, then in its place is the default option of the Irish 
backstop. Now, the Irish backstop means that if the UK cannot figure out a future trade deal by the end of the transition period, that's the period of time laid out for negotiating the future trade relationship, then the UK will remain in a permanent customs territory and Northern Ireland will remain in a form of single market. So the problems from being outside a single market and customs union will not apply and therefore no hard border would need to be created on the island of Ireland. But Theresa May's deal was rejected for many reasons. But one of those reasons was because an independent panel of UK and EU members would only be able to agree our exit from such an arrangement. Therefore, we could be stuck in a customs territory for an indefinite period of time. So solutions to the backstop itself have included putting an end date to ensure that it would only be temporary which the EU and Ireland have refused because an end date on a default position no longer makes it a reassurance policy and instead it becomes much more uncertain. Now neither the EU nor the UK want the Irish backstop but that doesn't mean the alternatives are more likely either. Labour want the UK to stay in a customs union and therefore we wouldn't be able to make independent trade deals with nations outside the EU. That would make the UK subservient to a set of customs rules and we'd have to agree with other nations to be able to make international trade deals and we wouldn't really feel much of the potential economic benefits of Brexit. But there would be no friction at the border in terms of goods. You could argue the withdrawal agreement already says that we stay in a customs territory anyway and given that staying in a customs union and renegotiating the deal would mean extending Article 50 to reopen the deal and make the whole negotiation process longer, it seems more likely that the UK will default to the deal by a parliamentary process of elimination than completely open up the deal and renegotiate a customs union. So there is talk of introducing number plate recognition technology. This has some pros but many cons. Firstly, it would be a kind of security check without being an actual stoppage or person. People would still have to register their number plate, so it's questionable whether it counts under the Good Friday Agreement. Secondly, what happens if somebody breaks the rules and crosses without registering? How on earth would authorities find them? Then, the technology itself is expensive. Would the cost of putting it up and maintaining it really be worth it given it's really only being considered to get over a piece of legislation in the Good Friday Agreement which doesn't allow security checks. Wouldn't it simply be cheaper to change the Good Friday Agreement to allow the security checks? Finally, it's asking for a piece of technology that can scan an image, read each pixel of the image, to be able to read the number plate. Then it has to work in the dark, work in the snow, and work with a vehicle moving at the speed limit. To do all that, you need an infrared camera protected from vandalism, a piece of software protected from hacking, a possible light or infrared light to see in the dark, and a possible roof to keep out the weather. Plus, if the software only works when the vehicle is at certain speeds, then you need a speed limit. And all of a sudden, you've got something that resembles a security barrier anyway. Therefore, breaking the Good Friday Agreement. Finally, there has been talk by Jacob Rees-Mogg to have checks away from the border. There are different excise duties, different VAT rates, and different currency and different immigration laws between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland today, both of which, all of which, are checked either side of the border but not at the border. A hard border means physical infrastructure at the border. Having checks remotely from the border is not a hard border, it's a soft border. But this would still violate the Good Friday Agreement by introducing security stations. Now you could make it a lot easier and simply just open up the Good Friday Agreement. But so far, the Prime Minister has ruled that option out. It's simply not worth risking more IRA-based terrorism. All the solutions about changing the details of the end of the Irish backstop still don't agree with the DUP, who see the single market arrangement as a different economic status to the rest of the UK. Which brings us on to an Irish independence referendum, which is allowed under the Good Friday Agreement, but once again risks serious civil disturbances within the island of Ireland. But what do you think is the best solution to the Northern Ireland situation? Join in the debate below and subscribe.